What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered what the develop persona is in Affinity Photo version two? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and today we are talking about the develop persona in Affinity Photo version two. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the develop persona on the iPad, but it's very similar in the desktop version as well. Now we're going to dive in and look at all of the parts of the basics panel in the develop persona. This is how you're going to develop raw photos so that you can take them from things that look pretty flat and not that exciting into something that looks the way you were envisioning it when you shot the photo. That's one thing that happens to a lot of people. They start shooting in the raw image format because they hear photographers say that they should and then they're like, why do these photos look so bad and why do they take up so much space? Well, they have to be processed and that's what the develop persona is for. Of course, you can do lots of other things in a fake photo, but the develop persona is specifically for being able to process these raw photos. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and dive in, but I want you to remember that this is just the basics panel of the develop persona. And this video actually comes from my full course on the develop persona for Affinity Photo version two. And you can go ahead and check out the links to that full course in the description below. Stay tuned to the end of the video for a special offer. All right, so now it's time for us to start developing this raw photo. We're going to really try to make this photo look better because it looks a little bland. Like I said, raw photos look a little bland when you get started. Now, one thing that I should note here is that I am going to go ahead and I'm going to use my mouse that is attached to my iPad just to make it a little easier for you to see where I'm going. It's totally fine if you don't have a mouse, you don't need it, but it'll make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to come up here to the top right and click on basic. So with these basic adjustments, we can do things like adjust the lighting in our photo and adjust the white balance or temperature of our photo. These are things that you really need to do with each raw photo that you take so that you can set it up the way you want it instead of your camera setting it the way that it wants it to be. One thing that you might wanna know is that you can zoom in and out here by pinching and spreading your fingers and you can pan around with your fingers as well. So you can just click and drag this around so that you can adjust what you're looking at. So sometimes you might wanna be very close, sometimes you might wanna be far away. All right, let's go ahead and let's start by adjusting the exposure. So I'm gonna just bring up the exposure a little bit here because this is a little bit dark and that looks pretty good for now. A lot of times I like to use brightness down here more than exposure, but first I'm gonna drop the black point just to reintroduce a little bit of contrast here. Of course I could use the contrast slider, but the black point is only going to affect the black parts of the image. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit and then bring brightness up. And photo editing and developing is really a process of just trying things and then trying other things and seeing what you like in your photo as you develop your style. Okay, so let's go ahead and come down here. Contrast is going to make dark parts of the image darker and bright parts brighter. So a lot of times I'll slide all the way so that you can really see what it's doing, but that's not of course something that I would normally do in a regular edit. If I bring contrast down, you can see it becomes very flat. If I want to reset it, I'll just double tap on that slider and it will go back. Clarity just kind of increases the distinctness in different parts of the image. So you can kind of see what that looks like now. And if I drag it all the way down, it gets very mushy. Okay, clarity can be dangerous if you go too high with it. It can start to look very fake, but we'll bring in a little bit more clarity here. And we'll just zoom in a little bit to see kind of how we're looking here. Okay, so let's go ahead. Saturation is the overall color of the image. Vibrance is going to be the color of the midtone. So normally I'll work with vibrance just because it's a little bit more subtle. Let me show you saturation so you can see what happens if you crank that to 100. There's not a lot of color in this image, but you can kind of see what that looks like. And then if we bring it all the way down, you can see that it becomes basically a black and white image. Let's go ahead and reset that. Bring in a little bit of vibrance here. And then temperature is basically the balance between cool and warm tones, blue and yellow in this case. So we're going to go ahead and adjust our temperature up. And you can see it gets warmer or down, you can see it gets cooler. So depending on what kind of look you're looking for, you can do that. Whereas tint will help you to correct any color cast. So if your image looks particularly green, you can add magenta. If it's looking kind of pinkish, you can go ahead and add green into it to balance it out. Okay, so that is the basics there of white balance. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to look at our shadows and highlights. So shadows is going to allow you to adjust the darkest parts of the image. If you drag it up, the darker parts of the image are going to get lighter. If you drag it down, they're going to get darker. And this is one of the great places where having a raw photo can really help you because you can recover a lot of lost things. So if I drag my highlights down, 
you can see that detail is coming back into the sky. I'm getting more detail in those clouds than I had before. If I drag it up, of course, I can blow it out entirely. So there's a lot of options you can do there as far as recovering things that are blown out or things that are clipping in the shadows. After you would do this, then you might need to go back and adjust your contrast a little bit just to keep your image looking normal. And it's kind of a balance between these things that are all adjusting different parts of the image. One thing that you can always watch for is your histogram up here in the top right. You can kind of see how your distribution is going. You can see that we're not getting a lot in the left and that's probably because we've kind of raised up the darker parts of our image. So I'll go ahead and increase our black point a little bit. The histogram will just shift a little bit to the left there, making it look a little bit more natural. Okay, so that's how we adjust the basics. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and talk about how we will adjust the tone of our image. Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning a lot more about the develop persona, specifically the basics panel, which is where you're going to get all of your lighting corrected. Now, there's still a lot to learn about the develop persona, including things like the tone curve, and you can learn that by going down into the description of this video and clicking on a link to my full course. That's available on Skillshare or on Gumroad. And remember, if you purchase it on Gumroad and use the code YT15, you can get it for just $15. Okay, let me know what you think of the develop persona in Affinity Photo down in the comment section. We'll chat in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.